All right, hello everybody. Um, sorry, right as I hit record something, a notification came in on my phone. Okay, um, so the Lord put this book on my heart today and only because it was easily accessible in my storage unit, I went and grabbed it. And I realize now why I never got around to reading it because it is pretty elementary or rudimentary. Um, uh, for me to be reading. It's not really telling me anything that I don't know already. Um, but I did just want to highlight this. So James Gall has written, you know, numerous books. And earlier on my channel, um, you know, I mentioned that he wrote the book called The Seer. He also wrote a book called The Discerner. Um, this book here is The Lifestyle of a Watchman. He also wrote uh, a book titled The Lifestyle of a Prophet. Okay. Um, and so I just wanted to, you know, kind of hopefully briefly address this topic of people calling themselves watchmen. Um, you know, we, we see this a lot in the Christian community, those who call themselves Christian. We see this a lot in the Christian YouTube community, social media community. Um, you know, and I, I can think of some people that I know that are both famous and just people that I know personally who consider themselves watchmen, um, but they have no real intimacy with God. And I just wanted to address how that is kind of um, an oxymoron, okay? So let me just flip through the table of contents here and just read you some of the chapter uh, titles, okay? Section 1. The Lifestyle of Intimate Intercession Abraham, Confident Friendship with God Remind God of His Word An Orchestra of Prayer Nothing Happens Without Prayer In Times of Crisis Live to Intercede Don't Give Up Section 2 The Lifestyle of Sacrifice Anna, Praying the Promises The Watchman Fast Watchmen Do Fasts Removing obstacles, waiting in quietness, prayers of heaven. Absolute trust, faith, called to battle. Section 3, the lifestyle of consecration. Daniel, taking a stand firm. Watching for Israel, the watch of the Lord, prophetic intercession for such a time as this. Praying for authorities, the praying church. Now, we're going to jump here to... The second little, I guess you could call it a chapter, where he opens up the chapter with a passage from Isaiah. Isaiah 62, verses 6 through 7. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night. They will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord... Take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Okay. Um, the point that I just want to make here is that there are many people that call themselves watchmen and watchwomen and... Predominantly, what I have seen them doing is they're just constantly, yes, watching um, and just relaying information to people. And yes, there is um, kind of a lending towards what people would call fear mongering and so forth. Okay. And it's all seeming to be centered around, you know, macro level events or speculation about macro level events and so on and so forth and while yes we are to watch and I'm not saying that some of these people don't watch vigilantly because they obviously have that part down but if you're truly shall I say ordained by God as a watchman then you are in the holy of holies category in terms of your relationship status with God you have made him Lord of your life, okay? So let's go back here to the table of contents. Section three, a lifestyle of consecration. Okay, a lifestyle of sacrifice, a lifestyle of intimate 
In intimate intercession, okay? So what is this all about here? Intimacy with the Lord. Fasting and so forth. Prayer and fasting. So this is the point that I want to make so that you can start really testing these people who call themselves watchmen or watchwomen. And if you're one of these people, then I hope... In in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, I release the conviction of the Holy Spirit over you. Many of these people are not actually ordained watch people. They're not ordained watchmen or watchwomen by God because they don't even have intimacy with the Lord. They don't live a life of intimacy, heart intimacy with God, and they don't live a, li a, a, a lifestyle of consecration. Prayer and fasting, um, some of these people don't do any of that, or cl just about close to, you know, barely ever, um, or if they do, it's very, very few and far between in their uh, lifestyle, okay? And so I want you to just start really testing these people, these people who call themselves watchmen, because if they are approaching things without intimacy with the Lord, then they are just simply drawing attention to themselves. Anybody can stand on a wall, so to speak, and wave their arms about and raise their voice and say, hey, everybody, blah, 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 and draw attention to themselves and claim that they're doing it in the name of the Lord. And what's coming to mind right now, thank you, Holy Spirit, is where Jesus said, that on Judgment Day, many are going to come to him and say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name, I did that in your name, and Jesus is going to say to them, get away from me, I never knew you. God knows everything, so he's not talking in that sense. He's talking in the sense of these people have not initiated a lifestyle of intimacy with him. A major part of being a watchman is intercession. It is praying the Lord's will. And the only way that you can know the Lord's will is to have intimacy with him. Okay? So many people approach scripture with their carnal mind, with their intellect only. The church of Laodicea. Okay? Yes, we need scripture. Absolutely. But we also need the intimate heart relationship with the Lord because otherwise you don't get the revelation that goes along with the scripture. If you don't really truly have the Holy Spirit and if you are not connecting with the Holy Spirit for the revelation and for the conviction that would cause the consecration and so on and so forth, then how are you going to know exactly what the Lord is saying? A lot of these people who are calling themselves watch women and watch men are simply just speculating out of their carnal, natural, intellectual minds. They are not speaking on behalf of the Lord. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, is there anything else you want me to say? If there's anything else that the Lord wants me to say, I will put it in the description box below as usual. But the Lord wanted me to draw your attention to this. There are many, numerous people who are self-deceived. They are just deceived. I know one person personally that I can think of right now that they are so confidently convinced that they are appointed by God as a watchman. And their entire relationship with God is essentially a lack of relationship with God because they operate pretty much, you know, close to 100% out of just their intellect. So pay attention to what these people say. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes and ears and start testing these people. Do they have an intimate heart relationship with the Lord? Are they just standing on a wall and waving their arms about and raising their voice and speculating out of their own intellect? 
or are they truly connecting with Holy Spirit in intercession, intimacy, sacrifice, consecration? Are they truly receiving revelation from the Lord, or are they just speculating because they, you know, I mean, <laughs> these people are just using rationale. And some of these people use, you know, numbers. They get so obsessed and hung up on numbers and decoding things and gematria and this and that. There's a guy I know personally, he's convinced he's a watchman, can't have one conversation with him, can't have one sentence of communication with this person without him getting distracted and obsessed with decoding each word of the English language, okay? Th these things are distractions of the enemy. And a lot of these people who have large followings on YouTube, I'm telling you, some of them are Nephilim, and some of them are just, at best, inner court. At best. They've received Jesus as their Savior, but they have not made him Lord. And they are not walking in intimacy, they are not walking in consecration, and they are not walking in receiving revelation from Holy Spirit. It's time to wake up, church. The Lord is not just separating us from unbelievers. He is separating those within the quote-unquote church, those who call themselves the church. He is separating those who are in the Holy of Holies with him in intimacy and consecration from those who are not. Where do you stand? And where do these people that you're following and listening to stand? Are they inner court? Or, or are they holy of holies? Or are they neither? Are they maybe Nephilim or fallen angel people? There's a lot of people on YouTube that are Nephilim. You would not believe how many of these people are Nephilim. They're incapable of any actual real true faith in God. And the fallen angel people, there's not as many of them from what I've observed in the Christian YouTube community. But boy, oh boy, they are deceiving people. And it, it really does confound me as to how people are so easily deceived and led astray. So, intercession, sacrifice, consecration. Are these people truly put on the wall by the Lord? Or have they put themselves on the wall? I bless you all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.